The cause of a lot of the greenhouse gases that cause global warming is, well, gas. Gasoline, to be exact. We are at the dawning of a new transportation age, which is very clear to see, that's going to be powered by hydrogen, powered by batteries, powered by alternative fuels, and clean burning renewable fuel alternatives. A future that includes both clean air and energy independence will most likely include both hydrogen fuel and federal funding. It's a win-win-win across the board, and that's what it's all about. And that's why we have to do everything we can at the federal level uh, to make those investments. As part of an effort to raise public and legislative awareness of hydrogen as a viable alternative to fossil fuels, government agencies and car makers from around the world have teamed up for the 2008 Hydrogen Road Tour. We're starting here on the coast of Maine, here with the lighthouse, the iconic feature. Uh, we'll be heading through several metropolitan centers here in the U.S., including our nation's capital, and ultimately we'll be arriving in L.A. 14 days later. Jason Perrin is part of the BMW Clean Energy team. What you're looking at is the sixth generation of our um, hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines. In fact, we have over 100 vehicles on the road. We've clocked over 2 million miles and hundreds and hundreds of people have driven these vehicles. Independent tests show that the air coming out of the BMW's powerful 12-cylinder hydrogen engine is actually cleaner than the air going into it. In addition, tests also show the water vapor emitted by the luxury vehicle is actually safe enough to drink. Although hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines like the BMW H7 are on the road now, hydrogen-powered fuel cell vehicles are another option. A fuel cell is a vehicle that runs on hydrogen and the hydrogen is actually converted to electricity and that drives the wheels and the only byproduct from the whole process is water. John Tillman of Volkswagen says fuel cells are a great advantage over traditional plug-in electric cars. Unlike a, battery, a pure battery system, we don't have to stop and charge it for between 2 and 8, 10 hours. We actually go up to a fueling station, refuel just like a gasoline vehicle, and then we go 5, 10 minutes, you're ready to go, next 200 miles. While fuel cells use hydrogen fuel to power an electric motor, and hydrogen and turtle combustion engines use hydrogen like your car uses gasoline, the only byproduct of either method is harmless water vapor. We need to do everything we can at the federal level to encourage the development and the expansion of these technologies. The main challenge to either method of hydrogen propulsion is the extension of the hydrogen infrastructure. California has 25 hydrogen stations and our governor has supported the hydrogen highway network and has funded a number of those stations and has given strong support to hydrogen as a vehicle fuel. Hydrogen is the most plentiful element in the universe. It can be gathered as a byproduct of natural gas refinement or produced from water by a variety of non-polluting methods including wind and, and solar energy here at home. The transport of hydrogen is no more hazardous than other fuels. It's a safe fuel when properly handled. The domestic production of hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cells can also mean the production of American jobs. What's going on here today is the future, a path to, to uh, free ourselves from oil foreign oil and domestic oil, to reduce the demand for oil in such a way as to both clean up the environment and to, uh, and frankly, to create a lot of 21st century jobs. Uh, this is a development, this is a technology that we should not fear. UTC Power is continually ramping up and, and right now there's plenty of jobs in this area. And hydrogen power is also a viable means of public transportation. I think it's important to note that the fuel cell technology is also work, works very well in buses and behind me you see a hydrogen fuel cell bus that is like one that's operating, ones that are operating in the state of California, transit districts um, in the Bay Area and in Southern California. Customers love this bus. It's clean, it's quiet, it's reducing emissions right now in our urban locations. It is getting twice the fuel economy of diesel buses and uh, these, these vehicles are the transit bus of the future. In Washington, the Hydrogen Road Tour got the type of reception usually reserved for visiting dignitaries. The vehicles that auto manufacturers have brought here today are not just the stars of a nationwide tour, but they're really glimpses into the future of transportation. The Department of Energy's position is that hydrogen cars are where cell phones were just a few decades ago. I remember the cell phone. It started out the size of a, of, of a briefcase and uh, wasn't very efficient, didn't do very well, crackle, pop. Now our cell phones are smaller than we ever imagined, and you put movies on them, you do almost anything with this one 
uh, device. Speaking of cell phones, the National Hydrogen Association says hydrogen fuel may be coming to a laptop or cell phone near you. Maybe your battery runs out because it doesn't have quite enough charge and it takes a long time to actually charge it back up again. Well, instead, you could just have a hydrogen canister and in just a minute or two, you could put hydrogen into a, into a tank on your laptop and it could last much longer and you could refuel it much faster. Another advantage is that unlike oil, hydrogen can be made almost anywhere. Right now, we make all of our gasoline from one resource, oil, and we make it one way in a large centralized facility. With hydrogen, you can make it from several different resources. So no matter what area of the country you're in or whatever area of the world you're in, you can choose the resources that are available to you to make, to make hydrogen and therefore meet your energy needs locally. But if you like a sort of bumper sticker summary of what's going on, listen to the Undersecretary of the Department of Energy. You just look at the back of the car here, petroleum free, and that's, uh, that's a, a good benefit. The other thing is zero emissions at the bottom there. For more information about hydrogen as a vehicle fuel, just log on to hydrogenroadtour.com. I'm Grant Winter reporting.